Greetings. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about the shock hazards associated with electric guitars. And I could tell from the response to my previous video about the death capacitor that there's a lot of concern and confusion about this subject. So let's see if we can shed some light on it today. Now, some people have a false sense of security because they feel like even if the chassis of their amplifier has some sort of a charge associated with it, which could give a shock, if they don't touch the amp itself, they'll be okay. So they hook up the guitar and wander off like eight or ten feet away from the amp and feel safe. Well, what they don't realize is, is the guitar strings, the tailpiece, the uh, bridge, all are connected directly to the chassis of the amplifier. Now I'm going to show you uh, what I mean with this simple little analog ohmmeter. I've got one probe connected over there to the chassis of the amplifier and I will touch the other one here to the tailpiece, touch it to the strings, touch it to the bridge. As you can see, every time the needle jumps that shows that there's continuity between them. So unless you're using some sort of wireless transmitter on your guitar, you're carrying whatever potential is on the chassis around with you in your guitar strings. Okay, now let's take a look at this simple diagram. Uh, I apologize for the crudeness of it. I've got my guitar player over here with his Steve Stevens hairdo and his ACDC t-shirt, which I guess is somewhat of a pun on today's subject. Uh, and using this diagram, I'm going to show you what the situation is with your guitar and amp. Now, over here, your amplifier is plugged into the wall. It can have a three-wire uh, plug, and the chassis then will be grounded. Or the chassis can be ungrounded. You use the two-wire plug. In that case, either your chassis can have no charge at all, or it could actually have some alternating current or a direct current charge on it, uh, due to some malfunction within the amp, a leaky capacitor, a wire that shorted, something like that. So, uh, if you do not have the three-wire plug, there is a possibility that your chassis is, and we'll say, hot. In other words, there is voltage here present on the chassis of the amp. Now, if it is, it can come down the shield, and the shield is what's connected to your tailpiece, your bridge, which I didn't draw, and to your strings. Also your tuners, for that matter. The signal inside the shielded cable is what's going to go to your pickups. So, uh, let's say that your uh, chassis has a 50 volt charge on it because of some malfunction within the amplifier. Okay, that means there's a 50 volt charge here on the strings. Now this is where things get interesting. What happens when Steve here grabs a hold of the guitar and grabs a hold of the strings? Okay, the answer is going to surprise you because the answer is probably nothing. If it's a dry day and uh, Steve is wearing probably rubber sole shoes, uh, he's not standing on wet concrete, there's a carpet or a wood floor, uh, there will be no reaction to the 50 volt a charge in the strings. And to understand why, we need to uh, understand what the idea of capacitance is. We all know what the word capacity means. It's how much something can hold. Well, uh, the human body has a capacitance for electrons or electricity. And by that I mean when Steve grabs a hold of the guitar, the electrons from the chassis are going to flow into his body until they saturate his body with as many electrons as they can, and then the flow will cease. Uh, the human body has a capacitance of about 100 picofarads, which is very, very low. But the voltage that the human body can hold could be up to 30,000 volts. Now, we all have walked across carpet uh, we, you know, with your shoes on, a uh, new carpet, and then you touch a doorknob and you get blasted with a big shock. Well, what that is, is we walked across the carpet, our body's capacitance was being filled up, our gas tank was being filled up with electrons, okay, up to 30,000 volts. 
Then we go over and touch the doorknob or the water pipe or something like that and a big blue spark, an arc, jump from us to the pipe. Now, when you were being charged up, you didn't feel anything, did you? But the only thing, uh, the time that you felt anything, is when there was that immediate discharge to the pipe. And that kind of hurt. Uh, came through like the tip of your finger where there are nerves that are sensitive to things like that. Now, by the same token, when Steve grabs a hold of the guitar, the electrons from the chassis will flow into his body until uh, he is saturated with the electrons to the point that his capacitance is reached and say it was 50 volts on the chassis uh, he will uh, be charged up to 50 volts and will be holding that charge. Now if he sets the guitar down and walks over to that cold water pipe and touches it with his finger he's not going to get the big blue spark that he got from 30,000 volts you won't get any spark at all you'll hardly feel anything. Now while he, when he first touches the guitar strings and this flow is coming into his body, there might be a little tingling sensation. Usually your fingertips are kind of calloused uh, and your hands and they're tough and you don't really feel it. But if you uh, were to put, uh, say, the bare part of your forearm against the guitar strings, uh, you might get a little tingling sensation as the electrons came into you and charged you up. But this is really not life-threatening. Let's face it, uh, you just walked across the carpet uh, and discharged 30,000 volts uh, and onto a doorknob, and that didn't kill you. So discharging 50 volts to the same doorknob certainly isn't going to kill you. In fact, you probably won't even feel it. But what can kill you is if you or Steve are holding on to the guitar strings with a source of electricity coming uh, to you, and at the same time you are grounded so there is a place for that electricity to go and you establish some sort of flow or current through your body that is what can stop your heart and that is what can kill you. Now let's look at a different situation. Here's the 50 volt chassis and here's Steve and Steve is grounded. He becomes a conduit then for electricity to run through his body and the heart, among other organs, is very sensitive to an electric current that's running through it. We've all seen on ER and these other shows where the heart stops uh, and they restart it with electricity. Well, guess what? It works the other way around. When your heart is uh, pumping normally and you zap it with electricity, you can stop it. So, if Steve is grounded and a current flows through him, it can stop his heart and it can be fatal. Now, since most of us, when we're playing the guitar, we're sitting on a stool, we're standing up in our den on carpet with shoes on, and we're just not grounded, okay? And if there is any potential here in the chassis, uh, we're not aware of it because that tiny little tingling sensation you might feel when you grab the strings for the first split second is uh, not going to get your attention that much. Okay, so uh, we want to be sure to avoid certain situations. Say you're in a garage band, literally, and you're barefoot, and the cement's a little damp, and you grab the guitar with 50 volts. It's probably sayonara, okay, because it will flow through you. You are grounded. Um, over here at this receptacle, the ground of this receptacle is the ground. It is this. So if uh, Steve is grounded, he's barefoot on wet cement, uh, the 50 volts comes in here, goes right through him, and straight to ground. If he's wearing rubber sole shoes, he's on carpet, a wood floor, uh, sitting on a stool, whatever, probably uh, there will be no flow except the initial charging here of his capacitance, and there will be no problem. I think you've all heard of this. Uh, there's some famous musicians who have uh, been uh, seriously electrocuted at concerts when they're playing in the rain. It gets to be a real issue because with all the equipment that they have plugged into all different outlets, uh, there is no telling what kind of potential they're being subjected to. And once the rain starts falling and they're on a metal bandstand of some sort, uh, there, it, it, there is a closed circuit and the current flows through them, stops their hearts, and they're killed or uh, seriously injured. Now let's look at the other possibility at the concert or actually in your own uh, garage or home. 
and that is with a microphone or microphone stand. Uh, I think this has probably shocked more people than, than anything else. You uh, grab hold of your guitar, you go up to sing, you touch your lip to the microphone, and there's a big a spark, and your lip is burned, and it hurts like heck. If, and if your heart didn't stop, uh, then you scream and yell, and if your heart did stop, everyone else screams and yells. Well, now, why is that? Well, up, upstairs, up here, the chassis didn't have a three-wire plug, and it has a 50-volt charge on it. Down here, somebody thought of putting the three-volt plug on the microphone amp, so it's grounded. And therefore, the shield that goes up to the microphone grounds the microphone. This is an absolute perfect ground. When Steve's lips get up here a little too close with 50 volts just looking for trouble, they arc across here, and if he makes a really good contact, gets up there and he's really uh, tongue in the old uh, microphone, uh, there will be a dead short to ground, and it could uh, prove fatal. This is why microphone stands represent such a threat. Now, I told you in the previous video, all you have to do is hook up a uh, voltmeter between the chassis and a good reliable ground and see if there's any potential. You could do that with a microphone amp, you could do that with a guitar amp. But say you're out somewhere uh, at somebody else's house, you just forgot to bring your voltmeter with you, and they've got a microphone and you have no idea what their electrical system's like. Uh, you've got your amp plugged in, you've got uh, their microphone and their microphone amp, and you're scared to get really close up here for fear you're gonna get zapped. All you do is this, take the guitar and touch the strings to the microphone stand and watch what happens. If there is a big blue arc, it looks like an arc welder uh, just fired up, do not, under any circumstances, come up here and start singing into this microphone. Okay, so there's a real easy field test to see if there's a potential between your guitar and the microphone stand. So let's just review real quickly. Uh, best thing you could do, uh, put a three-wire plug on your amp and plug it in uh, and ground the chassis. If uh, you don't do that, then hook up a, a voltmeter to the chassis to ground and test your amp to see if there's any leakage or any potential. Okay, barring that and you decide you're just going to take your chances, plug it in with a two-wire plug. God knows which way you plug it in. Uh, you've got 50 volts on your strings. Do not run around barefoot on uh, concrete floors, uh, do not play outside in the rain, okay, um, no matter how tempting it may be. But uh, keep your rubber sole shoes on, uh, stay on carpet or wood floor, don't be grabbing a hold of any cold water pipes or anything like that, and odds are you're going to be okay. I think a bunch of us are playing with guitars that have potential in the strings and we don't know it. Now that i told you about it, you, there are several easy ways to find out if it exists and also easy ways to prevent it. But you should not really be uh, in mortal fear of this uh, because as you can see, unless you're grounded, it really doesn't present a huge shock hazard. I don't want you to disregard that hazard though. Investigate and see if the hazard exists. If it exists, eliminate it. But uh, under all, in any circumstance, be careful and be safe. Okay, and thanks for your attention today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again soon, literally.